what else is there going on in the world? The Diddy thing is a little, little fucked up. My sister's really pissed. Um, our family, uh, it's, it's a weird story, but we kind of go back with Diddy, which is a weird, kind of a weird story, but regardless of that story, um, you know, my lawyer is representing him now and the no bail, he was basically my neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's a long story, but he was our neighbor. Um, like literally next door neighbor. Um, this was 30 years ago, maybe even as much as like 35 years ago. So he was bad boy, that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's not that important, but, um, my lawyer's defending him and, um, this was on the Upper East Side actually. Uh, we didn't have money, so um, my dad was a superintendent. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're long term. Anyway, did he? Um, you know, and he was quite kind of a New York hero in a lot of ways. Like he's the guy from the hood that made it big, but like, of course, just so, like, yeah, I don't even know what to say at this point. He's very disappointing. I'll say that, but I do think. Um, Superintendents get free rent in New York. So my dad and my grandpa were, were superintendents. Um, you know, they take care of all the other shit going on in the neighborhood. Diddy literally had a townhouse across the street from this apartment building. We lived in very briefly. Yeah, it seems in hip hop culture, it was decently known that he was a party animal and as well as like um, maybe a closeted homosexual. Correct. And uh, it's crazy that it all came out like this. Yeah. So, so the big question to me is not to say good guy or bad guy. I think that question has been answered. Sure, of course. You know, yeah. and everyone wants him to be guilty because he's a bad guy. And the problem with that is it's really not how the law works. Um, it's unfortunate because, like, you know, I, I don't like that. I want the law to work the right way you know, each time. And people are more excited about retribution, which is important, like we, we need to get even with people that hurt us. Um, you know, that that's a little bit of an open question for some people. But that's not the question at hand. The question at hand is, did he break a law? And did he break the specific law that he's being charged with? And a lot of people are just like, I don't give a fuck about that. All I care about is about this guy getting hammered by the law and I'm not going to give a fuck if they do it the right way or the wrong way. And that's bad for everyone, in my opinion. Yeah, of course, you know, the way it sets a precedent as a result of like people's fucking feelings, you know, the public opinion instead of like some sort of uh, following of, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, if you think about like the details of the case too, there's so much ambiguity to it because a lot of these women were there for like a purpose that isn't necessarily right. like some sort of non-consensual act of aggression, right? Like well, it's just like uh, very... What's interesting about that is the main, you know, my my uh, attorney released this real big bombshell today. The news media didn't make a big deal of it, but in the famous video where he's assaulting his ex-girlfriend, which is so shameful and disgusting, I can't say it enough. Apparently, just before yes. that, she yeah. clobbered him with a cell phone. If you've ever been hit in the face with a cell phone, it's not fun. Um, you know, you can really hurt somebody. Um, and was it the Nokia era? What's or that? How old that video was. Right. I was making a joke like if it was the Nokia era. It right, right. Martin. Say it again. Oh, my bad. I was making a joke that if it was in the Nokia era, it would have been a brick. Yeah, I mean, you can smash somebody's face in with a cell phone. Sure. And so I'm not saying that that excuses somebody from you know, hitting a woman is never right. But, but legally, it's different now. You know what I mean? But I can imagine, I could just imagine that, like, you have this domestic situation, woman hits the man, man hits the woman, domestic violence, perhaps? But sex trafficking is a bit of a stretch. Um, we don't know all the evidence yet, but I think he's going to get acquitted.
Um, we'll see. I haven't called Mark or anything. He's pretty, he's pretty busy. That's the case of his life now. And it's really ironic because Ben and Mark, you know, Ben and Ben is the older guy. Mark is the younger guy. They're sort of partners. Mark, uh, Ben made his career in a lot of ways by getting Puff Daddy acquitted on the first case. So it's pretty wild that it's coming full circle. 30 something years later, we're now, you know, Diddy is yet again in trouble. I mean, how do you, how do you go from a, a billionaire with everything you would ever want and need? You already had, basically, you, your life flashed before your eyes already in 1999 when you were arrested for shooting a nightclub up with your girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez. Um, these guys were more popular than anyone. And then all of a sudden, you know, you would think, okay, I'm going to keep my nose clean. I'm not going to fucking do anything that could put me in jail or whatever. And the guy just couldn't, couldn't get there. Well, I wonder if it has to do with like maybe three things. Um, it's that like football star kind of situation where you see someone who comes up from the hood and they're not from a culture that is right. You start that way. There's that, right? But then there's the other two things would be like um, he was known for a persona that existed at the time that glorified a certain kind of behavior. So he, he felt emboldened in it because that's what brought him to that point. And then the third, what if it's a reflection of how we all are? How many people would have affairs and cheat and stuff like that if they were in a position where they had access like that? And so, like, uh, behavior could be something that maybe we would all engage in at a higher rate if we had more money. Right. If you, if you had infinite money, would you have free golf? Yeah, so Arby's. Yeah. He did, he did this wild thing where it basically sounds like instead of jerking off, this is going to be kind of vulgar and I don't, you know. No, go ahead. Instead of jerking off to porn, Basically, like live. basically, he made live porn, right? Oh, yeah. Which is, uh, you know, kind of a wild idea. It never occurred to me to do that. <laughs> it's just so like, fucking, um, you know how things get zoned, right? So like, there's um a town that starts and ends uh, uh right next to my town, and right in the very beginning is like a live nude show shit. Like I guess like um Requiem for a Dream type deal, and then right at the end as well. So like they put them right at the ends of each place because it's zoning. It's kind of funny, but yeah, I guess that's what that is. It's like a beat off kind of John. Yeah, the nightclub was uh, Club New York, I think. I don't think it was Lotus. It turned maybe turned into Lotus. Um, there were there were lots of witnesses. The Diddy thing, but the lawyers did a great job defending themselves. It'd be bad funny if it was Al Dershowitz again. No, it was Ben. Oh, I gotta take <laughs> It was Braffman, Dershowitz, and um, Johnny Cochran. Yeah, man, man of uh, infamy. That's um, that's that's crazy. What do you what do you think that is? Like he's just like very good at defending like celebs in a sticky situation, so he stuck to it. It's like which, a game in his head. Which lawyer? Dershowitz. Um, he's an odd duck. He was Epstein's lawyer. Yeah, yeah uh, fucking OJ. He he for that team well, that he put together. He had like I think he pitched the idea of framing it within like the context of like race because of Rodney King. Of course, first of course, yeah. He did Mike Tyson. No, of course. You but know, I think the main the main effort. I mean, the main thing that that Dershowitz does is he's a legal scholar. He's a Harvard professor, right? He's yeah. Not, He's not a trial attorney. He does it once in a blue moon. And yeah, I try to call. Yeah, so in any event. Yeah, he doesn't pick up on his Harvard line. I wonder, I wonder why. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of innuendo about Diddy. Somebody's writing about him and Usher. And listen, yes, I, and then that song. I, what happened to the song? Okay, the song, he says, um, like, uh, we were like brothers, we used to play under the covers. Oh! <laughs> yeah, and then Yo! it turned out that, like, you know, him and Usher did share a bed sometimes, like, after a night of partying, I assume, right? And uh, Justin Bieber as well, all of them at the same time, I possibly. Think it, I think it was known that he was bi, but yeah, Usher was underage, right? Um, yeah. 
So then there's Bieber. But the point is, like, yes. okay, innuendo is one thing, but trial is another. And I, I've been through a criminal trial, and it's just, to me, like, if you're going to charge a man, bring down the weight of the United States government upon him, and handicap him because people trust the United States government for now, for whatever reason, and throw him in prison and in jail before his, he gets to confront his accusers, which is a, you know, constitutional guarantee before he gets right and due process constitutional guarantee oh sorry margaret how uh is asking me if i'm done with talking about sava um i do want to talk about sava but i do think we're kind of done talking about it um so anyway the point is like you better have the charges right and the evidence yes. and all that stuff and i think that they don't you know uh but you know we'll see the, the trial will be interesting i will tell you all of you folks that if you're in the New York area, it is free to go to these trials. They can be a little bit oh, nice. they can be a little bit laborious, but if you pay to go see a movie or something like that, look, you know, it's really interesting, and you know, you may you may want to attend. I mean, the guy is definitely not a flight risk. Well, I mean, don't you think that there's something telling about his decision to return to the yeah, mainland? I, Ch yeah, right change is change, change is. Yeah, you're right. Actually, <laughs> well, that's why. I mean, he would probably he probably right has some sort of legal advice of being like, okay, we can possibly get you something good. I mean, you saw him try to negotiate something like a house arrest, right? Oh uh, yeah, he could he could get house arrest, for example. Or he'll, he'll get the Epstein treatment. But he probably won't get like a day to work or whatever. Or he was a Epstein in like what? It was 05 or 08. He was able to like go in and out, right? To do work. Yeah. Sorry, I'm distracted. No, you're good. You're good, dude. Yeah, I'm basically collecting all the ADAS COG measurements ever taken in every trial ever. Um, I'd like to see if. Uh, see if there's anything to read there because there's a lot of thought from the cassava investors who are obviously crazy um, that somehow the open label data is very good for cassava and I'm going to I think show that that's not the case but regardless 